Hey, welcome to Ask the Experts live on Learn TV. Uh, this is a show where you can connect directly with the experts to get your questions answered live. And today I'm joined with my friend James, and we're going to talk about learning C Sharp. Um, first, I'll introduce myself. I'm Shane Boyer. I'm a principal cloud advocate on the developer relations team. And James, let's let's do a quick intro on yourself. Sure, I'm James Montemagno. I'm a uh, PM lead over on the .NET community team. Uh, I came from the Xamarin team before that. And I was a C Sharp and .NET developer before that, and I've had a long lineage in the .NET community. So it's super exciting to be here because Shane, you and I work side by side basically every single day on sort of growing and nurturing and helping developers around the globe learn to build awesome apps with C Sharp. So when you know Mel reached out and was like, "Hey, we should do this Ask the Experts," I was like, "Sure." You know, it's called Ask the Expert, but really. <laughs> we should probably add an S on there. I'm just saying. So there's uh, experts all over the world. We're not only, we're, there's so many amazing, you know, there's over 5 million .NET developers in the world, Shane. Yeah. You just pointed that out to me uh, the other day on our, our actually our, our catch up we do every week about building learn content for C Sharp. Uh, 5 million is a, is a big number. And obviously we like to grow that number every year uh, with all of the tools and, and things that we're making. But one of the interesting things uh, is that comes up often is like, how do I get started? You know, what is C sharp? You know, what is .NET? How are they different? And, uh, I might myself mistakenly mentioned on one of my own shows, we build, you know, brand new, like, you know, an awesome language .NET here. And I got blasted with like this in it, C sharp. Um, but recently, uh, Bill Wagner, who builds on the, on the docs team for C sharp, uh, in .NET, uh, we gave a session at Ignite. Uh, very similar to kind of how do you get started 101 showing our, our ms learn stuff and one of the questions that i kept seeing come up in our chat was you know what is c sharp versus net how are they different how are they mm -hmm. saying um and it seems like a very common question so kind of what are your thoughts about that yeah it's a great question and i think that it's it's easy to get confused because net itself is so many things and C sharp enables you to do many things in the world of .NET that, you know, we have .NET comps and we have .NET live TV, TV and we have all these things because .NET is the foundation, you know, not the .NET foundation because that is actually a .NET foundation similar to other foundations <laughs> that are out there for programming languages um, and, and run times. But .NET itself is is the thing it's the runtime it's the thing that executes your code that runs on different operating systems so at the core foundation of of c sharp itself being a programming language .NET is the thing that actually runs your code at the end of the day and .NET itself the runtime you can think of it as the the v8 engine the javascript engine right that's an engine that runs in the browser or runs on your desktop things like that net is 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 it now unlike the javascript like v8 engine it's kind of similar to that you could write javascript you could write typescript you could you know different things like that that it can that it can execute and run i guess typescript is compiled to javascript but you know what i mean yeah um the idea is that you can write in different languages and net can run it so .NET itself, the runtime basically runs everywhere. And, and I want to say basically everywhere because it's probably not absolutely everywhere, but .NET itself can be embedded into tiny little IoT devices like a Raspberry Pi. I've talked to people that is embedded in train systems. It, of course, runs on Windows, Mac, Linux. Uh, it runs on iOS, Android. Um, it runs on it runs watches. On on my Samsung, uh, my Samsung refrigerator. Yes, well, right. So we have all those things, and I, I think too is that when we talk about .NET in general, it's, we're also talking about the ecosystem, right? Because there's a yeah. lot of pieces and parts that support .NET and the languages that go with it, like NuGet, which is where we get all of our packages from. And from an approachability standpoint, you start hearing all these things. They're like, oh wait, it's a it's, it's got a foundation. It's got multiple languages: the C sharp, you know, F sharp, VB, all these things. It feels like that's an awful lot for me to bite off. Um, yeah. So where where are some of the places that, and we could probably name a thousand, but some of the places and, and resources that we're building here uh, to help people learn C Sharp, uh, let's, let's talk about a few of those. Yeah, totally. And, and also I wanna make sure that everyone that's on Learn TV right now, if you have questions, we're here, we're ready for them. So definitely make sure that you go ahead and ask them away on anything in the world of C Sharp and .net. But let's get my screen up here really quick. So I think, 
the easiest place to go is the .NET website. It's actually dot.net. Like if you just do dot.net, like that's the actual website name, it'll bring you to the .NET website. And .NET itself here, like I said, is this open source platform and runtime to build anything, right? So it's the foundation. So whether you're building web, mobile, desktop, microservices, game development, machine learning, you can tap on any of these and you can get started learning how to build specifically for those um, operating systems, right? Now, the thing here though is the languages. So .NET itself is a common, has a, is a common language runtime, a CLR, which means that multiple programming languages can be fed into a .NET runtime. And, and the three major ones are C-sharp, which is the, the main object-oriented type safe programming language. That, that's what I use, that's what I've been forever. F-sharp is a functional programming language, and then Visual Basic um, is more of a, an approachable, simple syntax, um, also object-oriented as well. But you know, the the majority that we talk about often is C-sharp as the as the you know uh, the language here. And when you go to the the homepage, you'll see this learn button. There's a big learn button, and, and this again is is a great place to get started. These are all tutorials to get you started. But here is something that's really awesome is there's learning content for every way that you could possibly want to learn, whether it's documentation, you can click on docs, but here there's a 101 video series, Microsoft Learn, and even LinkedIn Learning. So .NET 101 um, series is basically videos for everything. Look at this, just videos, C Sharp 101, .NET Core 101, ASP.NET, which is for web, Xamarin for mobile, I mean, basically the entire ecosystem is here for videos. So if you love videos, like Shane and I love video and look at that guy right there, that's you, um, there's there. Same with learn, Microsoft learn. So self guided on your own pace. There's actually learn C sharp. This is my favorite, um, uh, Bob Tabor and the Microsoft learn team put these together. There's hours upon hours of content of learning absolutely anything. And check this out. This is so cool. Like you, click on this and you learn about like what it is, but then also you can just write the code in the browser. You could just run it. See, I just, I just, I just did that. I said, hello world. And I hit run and it said, hello world. I could say, hello, chain. Boom. Right. Check this out. I can, I can just run normal logic. I could say four int I equals uh, zero. I is less than five. I plus plus. So now I would learn this later because we'd learn about how to loop, but I can see that I, I know C sharp. I know the syntax here and I can loop over this five times. So I can say, hello, learn TV, right? Yeah. Um, yeah James, that, that brings up a good, uh, a, kind of a good question, at least for me and people that I've uh, talked with, they go, I don't want to learn .NET or I do want to learn .NET, but there's always a, but, uh, yeah. I want to learn C sharp, but, and the, but is, what about this huge download Visual Studio? You know, yeah. I'm watching you write it actually right in the browser, which I believe we written that component in .NET and C Sharp uh, with .NET Interactive, right? Yeah, exactly. This is this is something called um, try.net, part of .NET Interactive. And you'll find this throughout the API documentation, um, through the normal documentation on the .NET website, and also on Microsoft Learn. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can do just in the browser. It's like a playground, if you will, that you can just write code. You see me, I was just writing code. I just started doing some string interpolation, all sorts of things. But all of these um, learn modules here in the C Sharp collection enable you to do that. So if you go application logic, there's all sorts of you know learning about conditional operators and they're all in here. It's like, hey, try this out. And like, it's just gonna output code right there. The cool part about dot, .NET and C Sharp when you want to get started is that it's, it is really easy. So if we go back to the .NET website, literally get started is hello world in 10 minutes. And you can do everything by command line too. So for example, in this tutorial, you can just download and do command line and use the text editor and run C Sharp applications with .NET. So you download .NET, you just say what version of .NET I have, I just create a new application. Check this out. There's even a, a GIF in here. Wow, that's amazing. And I create an app and I can like run the app. Like, so this is a full C sharp application 
and you can just like run it here, you know, um, directly from the command line, or you can use VS Code. So if you have a, if you like lightweight code editors like VS Code, um, you can go ahead and integrate into that ecosystem, or you can install Visual Studio or Visual Studio for Mac. So whether you're on Windows, Linux, or Mac, you are good to go. Yeah, or just check out stuff in the browser too. Like that's another thing here on this learning center, you can follow this in browser tutorial. So very similar to learn, but it's like, hey, here's your hello world, like running it very similar. So you can see how that try.net, .net interactive experience is sort of like, hey, like this is approachable. This is easy to learn as you start going. Yeah, and I and I I really like the, the constant, just being able to do that right there in the browser. Um, you know, you can know a lot of things about C Sharp. And, um, you know, we're up to C Sharp 9, you know, as far as the versions. I often go to to our tutorials and go, you know, I forgot how to do X. Let me see if yeah. I have a quick example. Let me try it before I put it in my code. Uh, we've got a couple of questions that popped up, and I'll and I'll throw one out at you. Um, Chloe here says, I want to learn to program, but I've heard C Sharp isn't where the jobs are. Can you explain if I should start here or somewhere mm -hmm. else? Now, I'll preface your answer with, we did mention at the beginning, there were 5 million .NET developers uh, in the world. So I'm sure that there are jobs out there um, for that, but I'll let you answer that, James. Yeah, sure. Actually, um, let's bring my screen up one more time. I removed it, but um, let's bring it back up one more time. Um, here's a really cool part. Actually, if you scroll down to the bottom here, you can look at um, some of the customers using C Sharp and .NET. And you can actually browse these .NET customer showcase stories of just some of the companies. Obviously, there's hundreds of thousands of companies using C Sharp and .NET um, across the globe. Um, mm -hmm. and, and this is all different verticals and all different things. You can just keep scrolling. You can learn about like the apps that they're building, the websites they're using, all sorts of stuff. But I would say this, th here's the thing. When you go to learn C Sharp, um, it depends on what you're looking to build. Like, what do you want to, to go and actually do? So I always say learn C Sharp first, because once you learn C Sharp as just the basic building blocks programming language, you can build any of these things. I myself, I'm a mobile developer um, using C Sharp and Xamarin. That's like my my jam every day. That's how I got my first job in Seattle um, over a decade ago. Before that, I, I joined Canon, the camera company. I worked on printer software for them. Um, C Sharp job. I mean, my entire jobs in my industry is all C Sharp. Um, many, many things that we uh, obviously build here at Microsoft are C Sharp. Yeah, um, yeah there's hundreds of thousands, thousands of companies around the globe. But I think like you may see C Sharp on the job listing, or you may also see the specific frameworks. So for example, you might say, oh, I'm looking for an ASP.NET developer. Well, that's a C Sharp developer that's building websites. Oh, I might need a Xamarin developer. Well, that's a C Sharp developer building mobile apps. Or I might need a, a, a WinForms and WPF developer. Oh, that's a C Sharp developer building desktop apps, right? Or I need someone that is an expert in backend web APIs. Well, that's someone using, you know, microservices and Docker and Kubernetes, but they're building it with web API, part of ASP.NET Core. So those are the things to look for. But yeah, I mean, like I said, like you said earlier, the five plus million developers around the globe, um, and it's definitely growing strong and um, it's out there. I think also things could be regional. It also, it's a pen, right? I mean, if, depending on where you live, where you're looking at, but yeah, definitely give the job boards a look. But um, yeah, I think yeah. there's, you know, one of our biggest, one of our best customers or biggest customers, um, which is where a lot of people go for their answers. So like Stack Overflow, like mm -hmm. Stack Overflow is actually written in C Sharp mm -hmm. um, in the ASP.NET framework. So there are a lot of jobs out there. Um, obviously, um, you know, James and I, we practice the C, the C Sharp every day uh, with all the things that we're doing. Um, but I'm wondering uh, also, you know, what about uh, kids in programming? We see a lot of um, other uh, other companies. I won't call them competitors because everybody's got their own framework on why they do things. But do we? Do you feel like like C Sharp is approachable for kids? I know that some people jump in with JavaScript or Python or um, I can't think of another one. I would throw at a child. You know, depending on the age. But I mean, do you feel like C Sharp is a uh, an approachable language for for children? Here's the thing, yeah, uh, Muzamil asked, asked this uh, specific question, right, of like, how do you get started? It's a great question. I think, I'm not a kid, but when I got started, I was interested in something I was passionate about, which was video games. And I learned C++ first, um, actually, that was C, C++ was my first programming language. 
And then once I found C Sharp, I fell in love. I was doing some Java development here and there and university. And then uh, we had a C Sharp class on um, interface based programming and it blew my mind. Um, but that wasn't until I was there uh, in college. Um, I think that the thing is with getting kids into coding, like my nieces and nephews, I try to find things that are less about a programming um, language and more about the concepts, the building blocks. So something like make code, which is um, something that we make here at Microsoft is a great way of building um, interactive games and things in the browser. So it's called make code. You can just Google that make code um, is really fun. Um, I think also there's a bunch of learn modules on like space exploration and, and other things like that. And to me, it's, it's less about the specific language and more about the concepts. Like when I took my first programming classes, it was data structures, right? Like what is a class? What is yeah. a, you know, what are these different things, um, in general? So that's how I look at it. I think C sharp itself is a relatively approachable programming language, but it is, um, what are you looking to, to make and build? And you can build games, right? You can build games with C Sharp and .NET, which is something you know kids usually like to do. That's what I like to do at least. Um, but I would say that, yeah, like I like to think of the, let's do some fun stuff and let's learn about loops and let's learn about logic of bully, you know, a true false gate, you know what I mean? And how does that interact and and how do I go there? Um, again, like I said, I'm not a, uh, <laughs> not a, not a kiddo, that but that's what I think. I think uh, kind of what you're saying, you know, uh, at a high level is the basic concepts of, you know, logic exist and they're pretty similar across the languages. Like if I look at JavaScript and I look at a kind of an if statement or like you did the, the four, the four I, you know, those are basically the same uh, semantics, right? When mm -hmm. we're, we're typing those things out. So what is it conditionals and what about the for loops and, and things like that, understanding that prior to jumping into a specific language um, is kind of where I would lead folks. I know that I want to say there's, there's some sort of a coding blocks and there's a number of them, right? Where, mm -hmm. where people are dragging the coding blocks on there. It's got the if statements and the four yeah. and things. I think understanding those concepts before jumping into the language is good. I think most languages are very approachable and easy to teach uh, as long as you get the basics out of the way first. Right? Yeah, totally. And then, once you learn the foundation of like, here's data structures, here's how logic blocks sort of work, then let's go into actual programming language syntax. And then let's go into like, well, how does the web work? How does mobile yeah. work? Like there's layers there um, of, you know, that. But I think with any sort of um, thing, like getting those building blocks, the drag and drop things um, first are super, super good. Yeah. So Caitlin's asking, is there like a community for folks getting started? There's 5 million uh, of us. 5 million. <laughs> it's an interesting thing because we, there are a lot of resources. I mean, you could check out your local meetups. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to meetup.com uh, and look, I think it's meetup.com slash .net. You can, it's yeah. how you can get to it. Uh, you can see all of the, the community efforts in your area. And obviously we're now at a point where there's a ton of online conferences and presentations. Yeah. James, we've got the, all the stuff on live.net, right? That does yeah. community stuff. Let's bring my um let's bring on my screen one more time here. Well. So when you're on the .net website, so dot dot net, D O T dot net, there's a, actually a big community button. And um, there's also this thing called live TV. So we'll check out both of those. So just what you said, uh, Shane, like this is the the .net developer community. We feature some things like right now .net live TV, which I'll talk about, meetups. So there's not only meetups like in your area, but also virtual user groups. These are cool. Like this is the .NET virtual user group. There's a, over, you know, this started a few months ago, but basically any user group around the globe that's virtual will submit their sessions here so you can just join. So obviously no one's meeting in person right now in most of the world. So you can just join in on this and, and get notified of all those events. Yeah. But there's also all these other things we have like Q&A, there's a Stack Overflow, everything's on GitHub, there's blogs, of course we have our social, we have shows, YouTube, Twitch, um, you know, um, discords, you know, all sorts of things, blogs, right, community blogs, there's all sorts of great things here on that community tab. And if you're looking for more great content, you go to this .net website and then click on live TV at any time. You can see it's literally, that's not us, like something is live happening right now which right now it's the, the languages and runtime um, community standup. This happens every every week. 
So they're literally talking about how they build C sharp. Like this couldn't even be more time. Look at this learning to build C sharp. How does it, how does it actually get built? Mads Torgerson is doing this, right? Check this out. This is happening every day. There are shows from the community and from the product team members talking about C sharp and visual studio. Look at this. Like this is weeks of content and you can go to past broadcasts too. So these are things that happen recently, right? Which is really cool. And you can even click on any of these shows. So if I wanted to learn about the community stand up, check this out. There's just like all of these shows you can learn, just go back in history. And these are all interactive. So all of these shows are there and sort of ready for you to kind of check out in the community. Yeah. And I know Jeff, one of my favorite shows that recently started up is, is Jeff Fritz on your team has been mm -hmm. doing some stuff on Fridays, I believe, right? Just kind of a C sharp with Fritz thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he comes in and he talks about all sorts of different things. And nice, you know, we try to create a, a, a nice, uh, friendly, inviting community that that everyone wants to be part of. And and for these shows are part of that, right? Having having people you can talk with and you can um, check out. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, so one other question we've got here, we've got uh, a few minutes left here. Is Jason's asking about. Um, there's a there's a lot of focus on accessibility recently. It's coming up with the web and and all of that. And um, how have how about how have we seen .NET change to accommodate those needs? Um, and, and further asking if there's plans to do more. I'll answer that second question. There's always plans to do more. <laughs> but as far as accessibility, a lot of it is inside of the UI frameworks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's the biggest part. Like, so C# -sharp and .NET themselves aren't gonna really do much just like javascript itself or python itself isn't gonna do much it's really about the ui frameworks mm -hmm. that are out there so when you're building things with asp.net there's accessibility guidelines of course um you can also use if you're building websites there's um um there's a great tool that from microsoft called accessibility insights and this is a tool i use every day in fact um if you bring up my browser one more time <laughs> you can actually see it up here. Like it's it's literally this little button. So I, as I'm developing websites and doing stuff, I can click on this and I can get, is the color contrast correct? Is it, is it can I do tab stops on it? Can I do all those different things? Um, so Microsoft has a huge commitment on um, obviously making uh, everything as accessible as possible. Um, I think that you also have like the Xamarin set for building uh, mobile applications has a deep insight into accessibility too. all of them do. So that's definitely our focus. And I think one thing that I've been talking a lot with my team and other teams and engineers is how do we sort of uh, expose a lot of that early on into the development cycle and make that easier for developers to get great accessible apps from the start, um, where I think often sometimes it's an afterthought, which, you know, because you want to learn, you want to get started, you want to crush code, right? But how do we, how does the, the, the engineers and the frameworks sort of build accessibility in from the foundation? So it's something that the conversations are always ongoing. But if you have ideas, definitely reach out to us. I'd love to know. Yeah, I seem to remember too, sometime last uh, last summer, um, the .NET Doc Show did um, an accessibility kind of run through. So you can look, go, if you go to live.net and look up the .NET Doc Show, um, they did one with uh, an MVP uh, with Krista Mars, and they went through a number of tooling things. And actually, I think they walked through a Blazor app. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, some great things there as, as far as what their capabilities are. It is kind of outside of uh, outside of the actual C sharp implementations. Yeah. There. Uh, um, last, one another question here. I think yeah. it's Michael, I want to say, Michael or Mikhail, um, asked. If someone's looking to get into programming, would C Sharp be the right choice for newbies? Um, people that are brand new, absolutely. I think it's the best programming language on earth. I might be a little bit biased because I've been doing it for over a decade, but I think it's a fantastic programming language with a huge ecosystem, a huge amount of resources. I mean, and um, you know, it's evolving too. So like every year we get new versions of C Sharp, getting all sorts of amazing features on it. And the place to go, we, we talked to her, so maybe you may join a little bit um, later. But go ahead and and bring up my screen one more time for me. But I think the absolute best place to start, not only by going to the .NET website and hitting learn, but right here on Microsoft Learn, I, I swear this is the place to go and learn C Sharp, this collection. 
um, here. And this is going to take you through everything. If you go to Microsoft Learn, so any of the docs page, and you say .NET here in the browser, you're going to find this Learn C Sharp collection. And this is going to be everything you need. You don't need to install anything. You don't need to do anything. Everything's in the browser 100%. You can take all of this training completely for free. You don't have to pay us anything. It's all for free. And you're good to go. That's the place to go. Yeah, and after you go through that collection, right, those are three learning paths. And it says, well, we got two, three, that's five, six, seven, almost seven hours worth of learning right there, completely mm -hmm. for free. Uh, and then once you get past that and, and clicking on those, uh, that top level, going back to the .NET learn page, you can then take that, those skills and start to learn more about kind of what makes you happy. Like James said, he does gaming. Um, it might be phone or Windows or uh, the web or containers or what have you, there's a learning path that will start to apply those skills and build upon that uh, as we move forward. Mm -hmm. So a lot of great resources there. And that library continues to expand. Um, actually, something that James and I work on uh, weekly, we talk about what's the next place. So if there's something you'd like to see, let us know. Uh, you can follow us on the socials and, and just ping us and we'll be glad to kind of take your comments and go in there. So yeah. Uh, any final words, um, James, before we wrap up here? Yeah, I mean, I'm super appreciative of all the great questions that came in. Um, I love this community. I love this programming language. I love the runtime. Uh, it's the reason that I'm here today sitting and talking to all of you is because yeah. of C Sharp. I mean, um, and my instructor in college, Phil Miller. Um, thank you, Phil, <laughs> for teach, bringing C Sharp uh, to me and to all my classmates. Uh, but, you know, I, I went and I've built the gamut of things with C Sharp, right? I built printer software, I built video games for the Xbox, I built websites, I built mobile applications, I built everything. And that's what I love about C Sharp and .NET is I can truly sort of take my skills and build for anything. So whatever the job is out there, whatever I need to do next, I don't need to learn a new programming language or how a new runtime works. I may pick up a new framework to build UI, but I just love that I'm able to take my skills anywhere. So that's kind of my my leaving mark there. I don't know about you. Yeah, it's, it's funny you mentioned all those different those areas where you, where you kind of play around in and, and produce apps. I actually saw a blog post today uh, from someone on the team like tapping in you know light bulbs on a Raspberry Pi you know breadboard mm -hmm. you know and making those blinky. So we have C sharp and implementations for that as well. So yes, it is literally everywhere um, that we think it should be or could be. Um, it runs on Linux and, and, and Mac and Windows, um, which I think we need to continue to say that it runs across platform. It's free. Um, and it's free uh, and open source as well. So yeah. you know, we, we welcome the, the contributions to the, to the language and to the, the .NET community uh, and things that are going on there. So, um, all right. Well, James, thanks for taking you know, the time out of your day um, yeah. to, to sit down and chat. Um, and I think I'll say, hey, thanks for joining us today. Um, we're going to throw a link up on the on the, the page here. Watch this and, and other episodes, both live and on demand, and find out kind of what's coming up next. And we will uh, we'll be watching for you and watching for your questions in the future. So we appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah. And always feel free to reach out to us on Twitter. You saw our Twitter handles in there and they'll be in the show notes below. And thanks. And thank you, Shane. Appreciate it. Uh, no worries, James. We'll talk to you soon. Hi. Thanks, everyone.